recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues Podcast. I am Brian Buckley. This is being recorded on April 7th to hit the internet on April 8th. The college basketball season is over. The Duke University Blue Devils have beaten the Wisconsin Badgers. Well, they did it yesterday eh, to win the championship. Well, it's still, that would mean the season's over. But I'm confused. Why would Wisconsin be there? They played Kentucky. I don't... Why are they... I don't get it. She's perfect Until the lights go on And then it all goes wrong Cause now she's not so perfect So the great, historic, unbeatable borderline NBA playoff team, University of Kentucky Wildcats, lost to the Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday in the Final Four. What else can you say then? I'm happy. And it was a 71-64 score, and people may say, Brian, what's wrong with you? You're taking pleasure in seeing young adults lose a basketball game that you have no interest, no, well, I have interest, but no no, uh, real connection to. I just don't like John Calipari. I have nothing against those guys. They seem nice. Carl Anthony Towns supposedly has an imaginary friend, which is a bit odd for a young man that will probably be making millions of dollars in the NBA next year. But other than that, I don't think they're bad guys. I don't even think Andrew Harrison is a bad guy, even though he used the N-word in reference to a white person, which I I don't want to overstep my boundaries here. I'm still a bit confused by I understand the evolution of the word and with the A at the end, but it makes it that much more confusing but I don't. I don't think they're bad people. I just think it's it's good to see. It's it's good to see Kentucky not get it just because I don't think John Calipari deserved that sort of that praise. And someone that dislikes John Calipari in the form of Bobby Knight, the coach of the last undefeated Indiana Hoosiers in 1976. So I'm sure he enjoyed that even more. But uh, I was in. I went to New York City this week. And saw some family visiting there to Metro North down to uh, the city, which is, if you've ever been on, I'm sure this applies to a lot of trains or any commuter areas, it's full of husbands pointing out to their wives, how about this seat out of a sea of open seats? The wife then looking at it, examining it as if it were some sort of crime scene, working on the forensics team. And then saying no and moving on. It's a very confusing process. Unless you're next to the bathroom and it stinks or next to a door, I don't understand why any seat is different than the other, especially when there's a just a, as far as the eye can see, just plenty of open seats. I don't know why you have to sit and pontificate which one would actually be better. But uh, I didn't see much of the Michigan State-Duke game. We all know Duke won. They won the whole thing. Uh, I think I saw parts of it as we walked around Manhattan. I peeked in windows of bars it must have looked like a just a dirty vagrant homeless person that obviously people probably thought I'd made poor choices in my life that I couldn't afford a television that had to peer in as if it were the 1950s looking at some toys in a toy store but I didn't see much of that game but seeing the Kentucky Wisconsin game I saw the entirety of that and it was wonderful to see and but, but what else can you say it was a great game it was a great game Wisconsin was the better team and Kentucky played well. They just, they sort of fell apart. They, you'd think they maybe would be a little seasoned with the Notre Dame game to pull out tough victories, but they couldn't operate their offense at the end. Wisconsin hit a lot of big shots. Decker was, was, Decker was well. He hit two threes. Nigel Hayes is hitting three. Everyone on the team, everyone, everyone, every starter hit a three, at least one three. So, and you know, it just they met a team that played better than them all around. They met a senior driven or upperclassman driven team. And what what can you say? I mean, when you have Willie Cauley Stein, I know he's not the leading scorer in Kentucky, scoring two points. That's not good. That's not good at all. I mean Towns had sixteen, he was good. But what what can you say? I, I don't want to sit here and analyze a game that, that happened days ago, but the game is the game, and I'm happy it happened. Uh, going to last night's game, Duke versus uh, excuse me, Duke versus Kentucky. 
another great game. A great championship game. You don't always see these. And I think we've been lucky back-to-back years with the U- UConn-Kentucky last year. And this year was no exception. It was a great game. And the officiating was awful. Wisconsin got a lot of great calls in the second half. Only two, Excuse me, first half. Only two foul calls called on them. Duke looked a little lost. Julia Lokafor, I, I, I mean, I, I've said this before, but I don't know what's up with him. It's... He seems he's 18 years old. He's still a freshman, but he'll soon be a rookie in the NBA. But he's lackadaisical. I think he's overweight, and I he he, he seems like he doesn't grasp that big moment because Frank Kaminsky made him look stupid. Now Kaminsky is a senior, so it's it, it's expected. Not expected, but you shouldn't be shocked. But those those freshmen, the other freshmen on Duke, really, really stepped it up, including someone that we're going to hate for the next three years in the form of Grayson Allen, who has the typical Duke face that everyone is is just a it's a signal for hatred, and he has it, and he has that yelling rah rah Wojciechowski Leitner more morphed. Ugh, that's that, that. I can't find the right adjective or word. Ugh, you know what I'm talking about. But he came in there. Tyus Jones. I mean, both of those guys. Th- those guys won the game for for Duke yesterday because they were they were on the ropes. Wisconsin had them in the second half. They were on the ropes. And I mean, Tyus Jones at 23 points. That guy needs an inch of daylight to get a shot off. He looks like a blue devil too, but I won't hold that against him. Justice Winslow, another fresh... I mean, let's think about this, too. And we're, we're, we all acknowledge it, but it's kind of hard to... It's not getting as much pub, pub as you think it would. John Calipari's criticized for his one-and-done teams throughout the years. He, that is the system created by the NBA that, one, that a player cannot leave until after one year removed from high school. They cannot enter the NBA until they graduated one year afterwards one year after graduation. There we go. And John Calipari's been criticized for it forever. This Duke team, what player made a contribution last night outside of Quinn Cook's six points that wasn't a freshman? Jaleel Okafor, Grayson Allen, Tyus Jones, Justice Winslow. I mean, Emil Jefferson, two points. Okay. is he? I don't even know what, what class he is, but, the, but the, besides the point, the Duke team was almost like one of the last holdouts to, to, to adapt to the system. I remember in 99 when they lost the championship game. Who'd they lose to? And UConn has done it! Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, Elton Brand, William Avery, and Corey McGetty all left. And it was like, it was newsworthy. Well, it's obviously it's newsworthy, but it was it was groundbreaking. It was a big deal. It was the first of its kind for, for underclassmen to be leaving Duke. Duke! Yes, Duke. Leaving Duke. It's almost like uh, the Yankees and Red Sox were like the last ones to to get uh, black baseball players. They're holding out right to the end to, until they had to do it to compete. It, that's basically what it is. They had to compete, and that's, I don't know. I never thought I'd see that out of Mike Krzyzewski. I'm not saying that I'm disappointed in him because you have to adapt to the game. The game has changed since when he started in many different ways, not just freshmen, one and dumb players. And you got to think... Okafor, possible number one, he's gone. Tyus Jones could definitely go. Justice Winslow is a projected lottery pick, which I mentioned last week. I, I think I just have to get used to the draft being about potential and not what you actually did in college because he's a guy who you can see the athletic ability there, but he's wild, man. He's real wild. And back to the game, though, you know, Duke got some great calls at the end. You don't ever want to blame a game on the refs, but Duke got great calls. And then they it's come out today that that play with Winslow actually going off his finger, that everyone at home thought, oh my God, what is wrong with these referees? It's clearly gone off there. They went to the video booth, refs looked at it, they said, no, Duke ball. Well, coming out today that the refs never actually saw that same angle we saw at home. And why is that? That is, what, that, that is awful. How, how can that be? How can you run an operation like that? Is Mark Emmert, the head of the NCAA, to blame? I don't know, but he's easy to blame, so I'm going to do it. 
I blame you, Mark Emmert. Come at me. Uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, Duke takes it home, a fifth championship for Coach K. And they've already had the, the preseason poll out. Virginia is the preseason number one. And shockingly, Kentucky has the number one rated recruiting class for 2015. I'm not sure if we crown them now or we crown them in November like we do every year. But in reality, they've only won once under John Calipari. But So congratulations to the Duke University Blue Devils. I know there's a lot of Duke fans that listen to this uh, podcast. Possibly. Most likely not. But the basketball season's over. The women play tonight. The University of Connecticut women versus the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I've talked about women's basketball before. I wish the best of luck to the women. But please, let's not make the game equal. I almost want them to lose. Sometimes I'll be angry or frustrated with the debates I have with people that I've spoken about. Because they're not equal. I don't want to have this. But good luck for people that enjoy that sport. I'm not going to be misogynistic and disrespect the sport or the people that play it. Good luck. I will not be watching. Uh, I have other things to watch. But we move on from the hardwood to the diamond, the baseball diamond, as opening day has come and gone, reality. Started on Sunday, the Cardinals versus the Cubs. The Wrigley Field, the newly or currently being renovated Wrigley Field, looked like shit. Uh, The entire bleachers, no one's sitting in them. They tried to cover up most of them with these sort of memorial black and white photos of Ernie Banks, who the Mr. Cub who had passed away earlier this year. And then there was one part of the the bleachers that they didn't do it for, which I didn't really fully get. And on Deadspin, it showed that there were some enormous lines for the bathroom, up to 45 minutes. And people just decided, you know what, I'm just going to, Take a cup here, turn around, and the, and the, you know, and the, I, I don't know what's, what's the actual term for underneath the base, but the tunnels there for, for fans, and just uh, piss and mess and leave it. So they showed the cornucopia of beer, uh, having trouble talking today. What is going on? Beer cups full of urine. So that's a nice, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. And the Cubs, the Cubs lost, even though everyone thinks they're going to win the World Series, but. Well, it is the first game, Brian. Let's 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 not be too harsh. But I saw Yadi Molina lost a lot of weight. Must be a new diet. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, so we'll start with the Yankees. Their opening day. I'm not going to break down every game every week on the podcast, but it's opening day. It's rebirth. It's it's renaissance. 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 So. The Yankees uh, look terrible. Six to one. Masahiro Tanaka did not look good. In fact, some people on sports radio think that he should get the surgery for the torn ligament in his elbow. Force him to do it. The Yankees should force him. You know, like put him in a gurney, strap him down, straight jacket, and force some doctor to stick a knife in his arm and cut him against his will. Which, if they can do that, the Yankees can do anything. Uh, Alex Rodriguez made his debut debut and received a rousing ovation of cheers. And I just wanted to to touch on this a little bit. There seems to be a growing population in the New York Yankee fan base that is pro A Rod. Now, there are people that were pro A Rod before this last steroid thing. That's I disagree with you, but that's your prerogative. But there are lots of people. And when I say people, I don't have much of a life, so I mean people on the internet and on Twitter that would go after A-Rod all the time. And for some reason, Alex Rodriguez, well, we know the reason, because he can't stand not being great, took steroids, lied about it, whole dog and pony show, we know the deal. And baseball did some pretty dirty, nasty stuff to, you know, dealing with drug dealers, buying stolen evidence, things like that. And they made him, they made him look bad, which... He did bad stuff. And they also tried to take away his bonuses, which that is bad too. But there seems to be this growing mutual feeling of, I want A-Rod to do so great 
And I want him to do well too. He's on my team. My favorite team is the Yankees. So I want him to do well. But this whole like, he's a god. And A-Rod's my favorite player. And I'm going to stand up and cheer A-Rod. Where is this coming from? What is this? And I hear some people say, well, they're doing it. They'll show it. We want a redemption story. We're going to show the Yankees. that I want A-Rod to really stick it to the Yankees. By what? Winning games? By doing well? Yeah, they're, they're going to hate that. I'm going to go to those games. And I am going to watch those games on TV. I'm going to watch every game. I'm going to listen to every game. I'm going to go to every game. Cheer A-Rod. That'll send a message to the Yankees. Yeah, yeah, right in their pocket. You're, you're really sticking it to them. They, they hate that. If A-Rod were on another team, I could understand the... the if you want to root for A-Rod, root for A-Rod. Go for it. If you were on another team, it would make a little more sense. He's still on the team you're hating, and it's still the team you root for. I, I don't get this. I don't know if it's just... Yeah, it, and you got Bald Vinny, the, the head of the Bleacher Creatures, with his Forgive t-shirt in the style, stencil styling of respect for uh, Jeter. I, I wouldn't be caught dead wearing that shirt. Not dead. By the way, the Wells report on the inflated footballs by the New England Patriots is still ongoing. Nothing's happened and hasn't since January. But I just wanted to let everyone know. But Alex Rodriguez, why? I mean, he had a hit. He had a walk. But I, I and I'm not going to boo A-Rod. I'm not. I, I, I've spoken about Alex Rodriguez ad nauseum on this podcast. And I've, I've sort of come to the point where everyone did steroids. I don't care anymore. Alex is a disgrace. He's done it several times and lied. He is what he is. He's in love with himself, blah, 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 blah. We know it. But if you think I'm going to go all out pom-pom mode for this guy, what are you, what are you, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just more progressive. I don't know if that would really be more progressive or not. But, but speaking of Alex Rodriguez, uh, and speaking of people who are in love with themselves, all know it, Pontiff, Mike Francesa, was sitting in Alex Rodriguez's seats at the opening day, sitting with his family. Now, he addressed the masses on today's show saying that they just happened to be near his. Now, if if you're not aware, Mike Francesa is a Alex Rodriguez supporter to the point of patheticness. And he knows what he's doing with ratings and everything involved with that. He had him on the show, heartfelt talks where Alex had a safe landing spot where he can air all of his his uh, grievances with the world, with MLB and that man in Milwaukee. Uh, the man from Milwaukee. But sitting with the family after you say that, hey, we're not buddies. So he had just a few things to say to everyone that they weren't his seats and he was just sitting with other rich people that he's associated with, people with Belvedere, vodka, or not Belvedere, excuse me, Grey Goose, and I think tequila. And also, I mean, you know, hot shots that other people, millionaires that Michael frequent. Michael, look at me. I'm like him. I'm, I'm on a first name basis with people. Jeez. That Michael. Jeez, uh, I lost my train of thought with this first name stuff. Oh, boy. Can, can you hear me, Mike? Put my mic on! Oh, good. Now, now you can hear me. I usually don't comment on things that are uh, written about me on the show because, number one, uh, why draw attention to stuff that is usually utterly ridiculous and is just somebody's lame opinion and, and based a lot of times just in jealousy um, or nothing else. Uh, but they reported with a picture of me that I actually went to the game with Alex Rodriguez's family yesterday and sat in A-Rod's box at the game. They did turn out to be... I don't know if they were all relatives or some friends and relatives of Arod's, but those the some of Arod's family was sitting next to me yesterday at the game. I did not know them before yesterday, and I did not sit in Arod's seats. Now I'm used to the guys snapping my pictures when I go to the game, so it's not a big deal. It's not like it's not I'm not used to. Do
And to the other side of town in Queens, but actually it wasn't in Queens. It was actually played in Washington, I believe. Uh, well, not I believe it was. I say believe way too much. Most of the time when I say I believe, it is what it is. I feel like I'm on the witness stand. Or I believe, I, I believe that happened to the best of my knowledge. Uh, now they played in Washington. They won their first game, and it was not pitched by Matt Harvey. It was by Bartolo Colon because they want to save superhero. Dark Knight is his nickname. Not really sure. I think it has to do with that it's Gotham City and he's returning from surgery. I thought I remember him being the Dark Knight before that. So it's all very confusing to me. But he will pitch the opener in a few days. I don't have that exact information in front of me. But what I do have in front of me is now Matt Harvey. Um, Matt Harvey really likes himself. He, he's, he's a guy who, he's listen, he's enjoying himself as a young man in New York City. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. He's very, very aware of what's going on. He's aware if there's cameras around or media publications or a, or a man with a pencil to write anything he has to say. Now, this is the same guy involved in his naked ESPN, the magazine display. He is talking about his wine and cheese love affair. Um... He's seen at games with supermodels. I have no issue with that. That's his life. He can do that. But he has now come out. And this this happened a few days ago. Actually, I think it... What was it? It was early. It was the second, I believe, this came out. I believe. It, I don't... To the best of my ability, my knowledge. Um, he doesn't want to be judged, damn it. World, look at me. Look at everything I'm doing. I'm Matt Harvey. I'm beautiful. But don't you dare judge my life. This guy... He can't have it both ways. And he better he better do some goddamn work this season. He's looked great in spring training. Absolutely wonderful. The Met, Met fans should be very encouraged and very happy about this year. This the, the 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 preview of this year, not the preview. What's the word I'm looking for? The uh, encouraged with the idea of this year. But you know he said, as long as I'm winning and doing my job, I'm not getting arrested, I'm not doing drugs, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm here to win. I'm here to play. And who I hang out with is my choice. He has one father, basically, meaning his father. So back off. But by the way, listen to everything I'm doing and I want to pay attention to me because I'm, I'm very good and I'm, I'm very important. So I don't know. He just, he rubs me the wrong way. He really rubs me the wrong way. Maybe I'm making more bigger a bigger deal than out of Matt Harvey saying I, we shouldn't judge his life than it actually is. He just, he needs to do something. He needs to be amazing this year. If he's anything less than amazing, then he needs to shut his mouth. I don't want to go off on him yet because, because you no, know, I will. Screw that. He has not even pitched a full season. Give me a break. He is good, though. He's, he's very good. There, there's no doubt about that. And speaking of Matt Harvey, he plays for the New York Mets. And I promised you last week that I, we're going to go podcast by podcast with a little previews. And this is a very short preview of the NL East, okay? So let's let's start from the bottom. The Atlanta Braves, they're going to be awful. They've cleaned house and really cleaned house now. They sent Craig Kimbrell, their closer, closer extraordinaire, and B.J. Manuel, Upton to San Diego, so the Upton brothers are back together again. Hey, we're all happy, right? Because BJ or Manuel is, you know, he 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 contributes to teams, right? He is garbage. I'm t- I, he should, doesn't even warrant to be talked about. That's coming from a lot for a guy who doesn't play in the MLB and does a podcast, huh? Well, you know, all right, fine. But the Braves have said the hell with the season. We are focused on rebuilding for their new stadium, which I think the stadium that they have actually have in Atlanta, what they have it for 15 years. They want a new stadium already. Uh, they are not going to be contenders and could be epically bad. And along with the Philadelphia Phillies, who have, they're, while they're not changing their stadium, have sort of done the same thing. Jimmy Rollins left for this year. Uh, that, well, he was traded. Traded to the Dodgers. Chase Utley's still there. They've been eternally shopping. Um, Cole Hamels, their pitcher Cole Hamels. I think their asking price is a little too much. A lot of people speculate that he's going to eventually end up with the Red Sox because they have the right pieces and they need pitchers bad. But the 
they're going to be terrible. Those two are going to be two of the worst teams in baseball. There's no doubt. And if they could get rid of Ryan Howard, too, who is just a $25 million a year albatross hanging over Citizens Bank Park, he's... Boy, that was the era. I say that's the era. It's always the era of throwing money blindly at pros- at guys who show some inkling of talent. And Ryan Howard is going to a game last year. If I mentioned this before, I'm sorry, but went to a game last year in Philadelphia. Boy, they just booed him in pregames. All he did was stretch, and he was being ripped. Wow. And that leaves the other three teams. You got two bad teams in, in Philadelphia and in Atlanta. And then you have the two teams that could be wild cards in the National League, in the Miami Marlins and the New York Mets. The New York Mets, their pitching is unbelievable. Yes, they lost... Uh, Zach Wheeler for the year, but they still have a great rotation of DeGrom, of Harvey, of G, of Bartolo Colon. So, uh, their hitting is still going to be an issue. They don't have amazing talent, but when you have pitching that good, you can make some moves. You can do well. You can compete. That pitching is going to have to hold up, though. Maybe Matt Harvey can be the anchor of that stuff. I mean, Bartolo Colon pitched a great game yesterday, opening day. Great game. You also have to wonder, how long is that going to happen? How long is Bartolo Colon, this massive glob of a man, going to be able to do this? Him and his rubber arm can only do this for so long, right? All 265 pounds of him. What's he, like 5'3"? I don't know. I know Met fans are very, very happy and very positive about their pitching staff. Pitchers, man, you can never bank on pitchers. They they look great now, but man, when it rains, it pours with them. First, it's a pinky injury, then it's this, then it's that. Next thing you know, you got all rookies starting. That's what I feel like may happen with the Yankees this year. I could see just like a bowling pin just. Throwing the bowling ball down there, and then they all fall down. But good luck to the Mets. The Met, the Met fans, honestly, in in complete sincerity and honesty, I wish good things for the Mets this year. Their fans have gone through too much crap with that organization, with the Wilpons, with Bernie Madoff, with everybody. Just line it all up. I feel bad for them, and I hope they do do well this year. I doubt they'd be that nice to me as a Yankee fan. But, you know, I'm going to be the bigger man. I don't know. Maybe I'm just more progressive. I don't know. And you have the Miami Marlins who, hey, they had their roof open the other day and uh, a little microburst came. Guess someone was asleep at the uh, switch at the radar monitor. And it rained. It rained a lot. And it took 20 minutes for them to close. Close the uh, ga- the roof. And what do you know? <laughs> there was no tarp there either. So they had a rain delay in a dome. Can't make it up. Miami Marlins. But they have Giancarlo Stanton. We all know that um, that enormous contract. Enormous contract that he signed this year. The largest contract in the history of sports. He, and they locked up other outfielder Christian Yellick. And they'll have, what's his name? The, uh, God, I forget his first name. But their Fernandez, their rookie last year, they Missed most of the season with Tommy John surgery, so he should be back by June. This could be a team, you know, the Marlins, every once in a while, they sneak up on you. They sneak up on you. So, I see the... I, if anyone's going to win, be the, be the second best... Well, someone's going to be the second best team. I, I think it's going to be the Mets, honestly. And, of course, at number one, we have the Washington Nationals, who have many a pick to be the best team in the major leagues. And why wouldn't you? With that pitching staff, that hitting... Gio Gonzalez, Zimmerman, uh, Strasburg, Scherzer. I mean, they line it up, man. And the, the great players they have on that team, Bryce Harper, and, jeez, uh, I can't think of all the names. Who else is on the team? It's just great. Right ticket blues. Uh, Jesus, I'm drawing a blank here. No, oh, good job, Brian. It's, uh, you know, they're the best team they're Pick to be the best team in the major league. You can only name a few players. Ah, uh, let's see. Um, the jailbird guy, the jail time. Jason Worth. 
You got uh, Ramos, the catcher. Zimmerman. I don't know if he's still playing third. But listen, th- the team's good. I don't see a lot of Nationals games, obviously. You can tell. It's not hard to pick up on that. But the Nationals, I mean, this was an easy review, except for the part where I couldn't name the players on the best team. But the Nationals are going to take this division. I mean, that's not even going to be close. And I think it's going to go Nationals, Mets, Marlins. Phillies, Braves. The, the, the last two, though, that that is going to be putrid baseball to watch, if, especially when they're, they're, they're playing against each other. So, I don't know. Not much else to talk about this week. Um, I, you know, I, I, the one good thing, at least, the with basketball ending, I love college basketball, but we don't have to see the same commercials over and again, over and over again. Those god awful enterprise commercials were say they say that they hire more college graduates than anyone. I, I at more college graduates than who? Other car rental places? I that one never makes sense to me. They they need to clarify that more, and because they use the same commercial every year, it's the same actors saying the same dumb shit. So that one's gone. There's also the Charles Barkley, Spike Lee, and Samuel L. Jackson commercial where they're traveling together to the Final Four. So that has finalized, finalized goodbye. Three people. I I like Barkley. The other two I could deal without. Uh, and what's the other commercial? The one with Leitner, Clyde Drexler, Shaq, just hanging around watching basketball. It's tough when you're watching a sporting event that takes a long time. The playoff systems, their commercials over and over and over again. You feel like it's a relief when it's over. You don't have to watch it anymore. So, well, I guess that's about it. Um, I guess more baseball to watch as we're well, probably going to start getting into the NBA as I'll start paying attention to it now. The, the seeding is starting to come together. We're looking at what teams will be where, and then the second half of the NBA season starts, and NHL too. My analysis with NHL is not going to be very informative. It's going to be a person that does not know really the logistics of the game, but I'll try my best. Maybe. That's what you want to hear. 30 minutes of a guy who knows shit about hockey, talking about hockey all the time. Yes. Stay tuned. All right, I've kept you here long enough. You can follow the show. Follow the show. You're going to follow me so you can hear more analysis on hockey nonstop at BrianBuck13 on Twitter. And you're going to listen to the show on iTunes. You're going to listen on YouTube. And you're going to listen to the show on TuneIn Radio. And now Stitcher. If you have the Stitcher app, is it Stitcher Radio? I was told it was on there. I haven't actually checked. Great research. But it's also on uh, Blog Talk Radio, which I've done nothing with except put it there. So there is no excuse for you to not be listening to this show every time it appears. So get off your ass find or stay on your ass. Find all those venues. Subscribe. Write a review if you prefer, and listen, learn, enjoy, and live. So poetic. Goodbye, I'm out of here.